Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of the Observation Lounge. My name is Daniel Madison. I am OK Coyote on the Trek CC forums uh, and here on Twitch, YouTube, wherever you want to find me. Uh, today we are not playing a game, we are doing an interview. I have a uh, guest here. Uh, he's been a guest on my old podcast before this, on Assimilate This. Uh, he is the second edition creative director. Matt Kirk is here. Hello. Uh, we haven't we haven't talked in a while, Matt. It's good to it's good to see uh, good to good to hear from you again. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, <laughs> a few been, been been a bit. So uh, we're mostly talking because uh, we've got we've got this uh, project Excelsior uh, going on in second edition. Which is a uh, sort of a, a, a limited format, I, I guess. Uh, the idea is to. Well, why, why, why don't you tell me where 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 it came from? So I have some idea, but. Sure. The genesis of it came out of um, Project Awaken, which Tyler Fultz did um, almost two years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, that was to identify what uh, direction that the. Many go in to more game. The uh, reasons that players were leaving the game, and um, the the main five findings uh, were that we needed to uh, increase communication between the player base and uh, the, the design uh, network. Uh, we also needed to shorten the length of tournament games. Uh, we needed to raise the ability of new cards, newer cards. Uh, and my Google Drive is failing me because I was going to bring up my sheets <laughs> so I could <laughs> rattle off the last two that I'm You're like, I've got the I'm list right here. <laughs> um, uh, Oh, to help us new crew, and I know that was number four and number five. List, and you can read off the one that I can't remember the last one. Did you? You kind of broke up on me there, actually. Did you have the Excelsior? PDF oh, it's on the document. Hell yeah, here it is. It's, a, it's, the, it's the first thing we list on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, race playability and competitive competitiveness of newly designed cards. That was number one. Make the card pool more manageable. Reduce the card pool more manageable. That's yeah. the last one I didn't really get to. Yeah. Reduce so, the length of tournament games. Enable new player recruitment. Streamline communication and feedback within the community. Right. So, uh, at the same time that those findings were being uh, distributed amongst the two E. Uh, development team, the brand manager position was vacant, and uh, once that had been filled, I really got on the uh, got on the bandwagon for, okay, we've got this, we've got a clear direction from this, these people that have done a lot of research into, you know, what we need to do for the game, and so uh, we started uh, the kind of the proto Excelsior was the uh, initiative we did with the objectives towards the end of last year, um, which you know had mixed feelings uh, on the reception. Um, you know, people thought it was kind of interesting, but not that there could be like any kind of competitive format because it would be impossible to kind of balance things between different affiliations. Some are inherently more stronger than others, so you'd have to write their objectives to be inherently weaker so that things would be balanced. And so, and whether or not they would actually be, you know, allowed in the complete format or if it was going to need its own. So those kind of went by the wayside. But the, the core concept that we've um, kept developing for Excelsior was the idea of a rotating limited card pool where um, the card pool would start out somewhere in the in the range of four to five hundred cards and would update every three months and each update would uh, based on player feedback 
and uh, just response from the community wh uh, whether cards were being, you know, finding people were trying to break certain cards or, you know, it's impossible to build a deck without this card. So why, you know, it's all it's, a, it's an auto include. We, you know, we're trying to avoid that kind of stuff where people um, rely on those crutches of the game. So um, every three months when we produced an update, those kind of things would get taken out of the card pool if any of them just kind of slipped through the cracks, and then they would get replaced. Uh, but also uh, augmented the pool with um, different options for headquarters uh, deck archetypes. Um, and then uh, the larger the card pool would get, uh, based on the Awaken findings, uh, the Awaken findings suggested somewhere in the range of 750 to 1,000 cards in this uh, new limited card pool. And we, we wanted to make it uh, around 800 as the ceiling for uh, what would become Excelsior eventually. Um, so that's kind of the model that we've gone with, and uh, we're on version three right now. We just finished uh, testing for version two at the end of last month. We've collected data from um, the Minnesota Continentals, had a play test, had a public play test. Uh, we had a public play test in San Diego, and uh, even the South Africans got to uh, jump in and give us some feedback, and that was that was oh, fantastic. Nice. Fritz uh, Meissner is really uh, really rocking and rolling down there for us. So That's awesome. um, big big thanks to him. Um, so, so this is something uh, backing up just a little bit. This is this is not. Um, once this becomes a full-fledged, uh, uh, you know, once it once it leaves the project uh, phase and becomes like an official uh, uh, thing, this is not meant to replace standard, right? Like, no, this isn't this meant to is replace a complete the, card pool. Cool. This is just for like, well, this is for like like a way, a a way to ease players into the game, but also it uh, gives players a simpler. Uh, and faster option of play, right? Is that right? Right. Yeah, yeah. The the a initial easier to learn, easier to pick up and play. The yeah, the initial uh, goal for Project Awaken, as I understand it, was to find something to replace the Academy format, which had kind of served this purpose uh, in the first few years for right. Continuing Committee, as far as kind of being you know this lower lower learning curve. Uh, you don't have to ha own any of the cards. You just print out all the virtual stuff, and then maybe you borrow some commons and uncommons from other people, and then you know you make a deck. Um, or I guess not uncommons, commons and starters. That worked um, well. That worked while well. most of the simplest cards were of common and starter rarity. But then, like as the as the uh, complexity, I mean, we, we've put out how many virtual sets now, and like there's no real way we've, to to sort those we, out by a rarity. So. We have almost put out as many virtual cards as Decipher did physical cards. We're we're close. Yeah. It's about it's about thirteen hundred for each. And uh, yeah, we just got to the point where including all of the virtual cards in the same area was just not uh, tenable anymore. Um, Academy so, has gotten too too diluted and, and, and too complex with so many virtual cards. It's like you, it's like taking out the uncommons and rares isn't really eliminating a whole lot anymore. Right. You could build fully virtual decks that you could actually go play in a constructed complete Extended. tournament sure. and would yeah. and, and would just and would just wreck face in, in Academy if somebody was trying, you know, oh let's play all these common cards and oh no, you've got all this stuff to destroy me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, Excelsior now is um, not just mechanically trying to serve that need. We're also trying to incorporate a storyline element into it, and that's mainly why I got kind of interested in trying to uh, promote this just as creative lead, and, you know, I like being able to, you know, give people somewhat of a, you know, more imaginative reason other than, hey, I just want to go win tournament foils or whatever, you know, giving giving players an opportunity to kind of drive the direction that a card pool evolves by, you know, did the Klingons win this week or did the Romulans come out in force? And um, and that's what we hope to achieve with Excelsior is that um, the card pool, when it does rotate, 
there will be a few different uh, factors that uh, determine how it evolves. So tournament results, player feedback, um, storyline events, which is basically going to be all of any, any time there is a, a, a sanctioned Excelsior event, those results will get counted towards, you know, which of which of the headquarters in the in the format uh, did well and which did not do so well, and then uh, so if the Klingons did well, well, maybe the Cardassians show up to challenge them, or if the Feds do well, well, maybe the Dominion shows up to kind of put them back in place, you know. So uh, we're hoping that that type of uh, tie-in. Uh, incentivizes players to come out and really, you know, stomp for their um, uh, their favorite, favorite headquarters. Faction. Matt, right, did, you exactly. ever, did you ever play Legend of the Five Rings? Uh, there, that might have something to do with it. Because um, I remember, <laughs> like, they were of... around forever, and that was always yeah. there. That was always their, uh, uh, a big draw of theirs is their major tournaments uh, helped dictate their storyline. It even, it even helped dictate... Uh, what kind of cards were, were put into their future sets. That thought might have occurred to me as we went through the development and pitch of this particular format. Yeah, um, <laughs> that no, was I, one of the I things like that. that I, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great uh, yeah. creative idea. Uh, yeah, and I mean, you know, it's not an original idea, but I think we've got the ability to really um, play with the timeline a little bit. You know, uh, our current... Uh, uh, format or architecture, I guess you could say, uh, for the first season of uh, Excelsior, the first year, is is going to be loosely the next generation. So we're going to start with TNG and Romulans and Klingons, and then see where it goes. Uh, we have we have a couple different ways uh, based on participation and whatever that uh, we could add cards. Um, so. You know, if the Federation starts getting out of hand, well, you know, the board might show up. Or if uh, the Klingons and Romulans start teaming up together, well, then you might get the Cardassians or the Maquis might show up. Or, you know, basically anything that happened in the next generation is, is fair game. We're, we're, we're considering it to be fair game for yeah, what yeah. we could add to the card pool based on results. Kind of feels like how we started uh, uh, the block format over in first edition with, with a bunch of uh, next generation factions yeah except and without, except without, while the, uh, the, without the crazy continuing mission shenanigans <laughs> right right and, and while that certainly uh was one of the um success stories that we kind of looked to and trying to figure out how we we're going to structure this we we want to leave the possibility for there to be divergent timelines where it yeah. might not necessarily happen the way that people remember because if the Klingons come out shooting fast, well, that's not exactly how Next Generation went. So maybe <laughs> it develops a little bit differently. So yeah. we're we're looking forward to seeing where it goes. I like it. So um, you said that uh, the last the last big play test was at uh, North American Continentals. Uh, and you've you've been doing some some local play tests as well. Um, what kind of changes have you made, or are you making, uh, as a result of uh, the feedback that you're getting from from these play tests? The biggest change that we made um, was in version zero point two, which is what we tested at Continentals, and the South Africans tried, and we also tried in San Diego. The uh, the biggest change is the Ferengi. We tried the Ferengi in the pool together with uh, TNG, Klingon, and Romulan. Mm -hmm. And while the other affiliations reported, you know, decently okay experiences, uh, the, the overwhelming response we got from the Ferengi players was they're just too complex. They've got all this extra text that, you know, savvy players are trying to figure out how to use, but there's not necessarily a way to really leverage it. So, um we we kind of set them aside, and uh, the uh, two new additions uh, that we were getting in version zero point three, uh, those were a direct result from the poll that we took, and uh, we're going to be adding. I think this might be the first time we're actually saying this on so, somewhere public. So Ferengi's coming <laughs> out entirely. Ferengi is off the table. Yeah, At least we're, for this, we're taking for this it round. out. Okay. Just for and this is the last big play test we're doing. Um, okay. Initially, the thought was 
Well, let me let me finish my original thought before I sure. <laughs> expound further on that. Anyway, the first the two new affiliations we're adding are uh, based on the poll are uh, Cardassians and Borg. So for the last the last big play test at Worlds, we're going to have uh, TNG, Klingon, Romulan, Borg, and Cardassian, and no we are planning on we are yeah exactly. It's, a, <laughs> it's not looking good for the home team. We're planning on having. Uh, some assimilation tools for Borg. We're having some capture tools for Cardassians. We're trying to avoid the really, really awful things and some, you know, a little more uh, of, the, of the fair cards. Uh, we don't expect to see um, what is that awful interrupt? Unrelenting or something like say, that? Any of the board cheating? Yeah. Yeah, there's knowledge and experience is not going to be in the pool. Um, you know, the, 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 it'll mostly just be limited to you might get a couple people here or there, but you should not be expect to have that be like a cornerstone of the the deck strategy right, that right. you're trying to pull off. Maybe just you know, as you know, you might get a couple opportunistic assimilation. I was gonna say you still want to have like a couple of power cards in there. Just to, like, oh yeah, this is something yeah. iconic of the of the affiliation. Exactly. I mean, we didn't want to make it just here's five different flavors of solvers that you can play. Go have right, fun, because right. I mean that's that gets boring. But you know, we want there to still be some of the flavor from Tui without a lot of the negative play experience or complexities that um, some of those really uh, abusive cards can provide. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you, since I I, I have not uh, I have not uh, been in one of these play tests yet, I haven't really uh, spent a whole lot of time looking through the, the card lists. Um, first, uh, is there battle? Is that an option? There is, uh, there's limited forms of battle. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in the current card pool, or at least version 0 0.2, we had a couple different options for Klingons. There was, uh, things like a chance for glory or the spirit of Kaelas. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, among the more quote-unquote fair uh, ways to battle. Uh, we didn't go with all-out war or any of the, uh, like, Ba wasn't in there because uh, we wanted to make it, you know, a little bit of a, more of a, a challenge because, you know, for the, for the Klingons, Klingons are already really good at solving missions if uh you know if they can really hone their uh their skill piles into you know leadership transporters honor that kind of thing that uh, the klingon the klingon sword deck does already really well uh so you know that while some of that is still available in there um we wanted there to also be an option to round the corner with with points from from battling um so we, we tended to stay more with the points battle reward rather than um, you know killing a bunch of people because one of the things that were, one of the uh, main goals of awaken was to speed up games and you don't speed up games by killing your opponent's personnel because <laughs> then that just that just <laughs> makes the game take longer because they have to play people to replace and etc so yeah. um along with that we really uh are focusing on dilemmas that you face them, they either stop or kill somebody or do something with them, and then they go underneath the mission. We're trying to avoid a lot of the bounce dilemmas, a lot of the uh, plays in your core dilemmas, so we probably won't see 8472 until maybe Voyager block if we decide, or Voyager block, Voyager season if we decide to go that way. Um, so you should expect to maybe be able to stop your opponents at their missions maybe two or three times before they're finally going to build up enough uh, attrition to really knock it down. Um, so that kind of that kind of harkens back to the the beginnings of the game. So, so where, dile yeah, uh, dilemma piles will be mostly attrition based. That you, you, there, it'll be inevitable. Least, you will get to you will get this mission done eventually. Right. They're, they're, you can see walls, but we're trying to avoid the walls that are just like, return to their pile if you don't pass. Yeah. Um, another question. I don't know if you... Uh, I, I don't see a rule about it in, in on this page, and I don't know if you, how much time you've cons uh, spent considering this. Um, is dual HQ an option? That's actually one of the things that we updated version 3. Okay. Uh, it was... It was an option in version 0 0.2. Uh, nobody really tried it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but um, we concluded 
that uh, keeping it to single headquarter format uh, simplifies the overall uh, metagame and um, lets us avoid having to put dilemmas in there that specifically call out dual, dual headquarters things so we don't have to <clears throat> excuse me we don't have to get into um, you know Dalrock killing more than one person or you know any other any no other number of dilemmas that punish you having double hack we don't really have to focus on those and we can right. Right. play more play more more fair stuff yeah. right it just makes room for for other stuff and it helps players especially newer players just kind of simplify on okay this is the basic way the game is played and then when you get to when you graduate to standard oh you can play more than one headquarters that's an awesome idea and then that gives them the uh, extra incentive to want to learn how to how to play the full game. I got you. Uh, so it is so it is going to stay single HQ uh, for the time being. In, in, the last, the last play iteration. test, the last play test version zero point three that, that will be at Worlds is going to is going to have a rule in there that says you can command only one headquarters. Yeah. Okay. That's not to say that when we finally release the full version in November that. We might take that out. We're just trying it for the playtest. Mm -hmm. If we get enough feedback that where people are complaining that, hey, I want to try double headquarters, then you know we'll reconsider it. But uh, for now, we're thinking that single headquarters just simplifies it, and it's the the cost benefit is there to keep it that way for now. Sure. Um. So, uh, you said next the next uh, the next version is going to get playtested at Worlds. Um. So, I, 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 a little, uh, a little bird has told me that uh, you might be making an appearance there. Yeah, I, uh, I booked my plane ticket and I've got a hotel room secured. So, yeah, I'll be, at, I'll be at Worlds. I'm, I'm excited. That's the first time I've gone since, uh, 2013. I think was the last one at, uh, at Gen Con that I went, to, I got to go to. Uh, but, uh, 14. Yeah. Yeah, three okay. years ago. Yeah, I was sure. at that one. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to uh, coming out there. It'll be my first time in uh, in Florida. That's not July. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's still gonna be hot. <laughs> yeah. So, well, sure, but hopefully it'll be somewhat less less uh, uh, unbearable. Yeah. You know, in October versus July. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm uh, thinking about maybe uh, taking a look at one of the the Disney uh, theme parks on a on a day off out there. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, getting to run the the play test and collecting more feedback. And uh, gonna take another shot at uh, playing in Two Worlds. That uh, I know it doesn't come around very often. No, definitely. That's, that that sounds good. Yeah, I know the uh, the the play test um, is going to be. Uh, I, I want to say it's. I, I'm not looking at the schedule now. I should have had that open. Uh, I, I think it's say, Friday morning. Yeah, it's Friday. It it's, runs it's Friday morning during the during during One Worlds. Yeah, it runs during day one of of, of One E Worlds. Um, right. That's not really an issue. Uh, Orlando is a very big two E town. Most of the local players uh, do not play One E at all. So I know that they're like I, I I know a few of them have already expressed interest in in, in being in this play test. So you're you're not going to have a problem with players for that. Oh, I, I didn't figure that we would actually <laughs> when when we did the play test when we did the play test at Continentals, I was uh, I was expecting we were going to get maybe four people because um, there at that point there were four different headquarters, so we made. Four decks and we made two copies of each deck just in case maybe we got five or six but we ended up with eight people i was just like wow i mean yeah that, it's only two shy of what we had actually at the actual two e continentals <laughs> I, was, uh, I was pretty surprised but uh um, not all of them were people who played in two e worlds we had a couple one e players actually who were just kind of looking for something to do and uh, we got some great uh kind of newish player feedback based on uh you know their their kind of unique perspective of mostly being one e players and kind of you know maybe playing two e a long time ago and um, so they they provided some good insight into uh, what we can do to kind of improve that for uh, for new or returning players. That's cool. Yeah, um, I'm I'm uh, you know we we only just put the that the play test into the system, so I'm not you know not not many. Uh, 
pre-registered yet, but I am uh, interested to see who turns up for that. Uh, I'm, I'll be playing in one E Worlds myself, but I'm uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing how that event goes and, and hearing some of the feedback from it. And I mean, even if people don't pre-register for it, if you show up, we'll have a deck for you to play. I'm going to have sure. a bunch of different pre-constructed decks. I'll probably bring, well, I guess we're going to have 10 now. Uh, the uh, the original four headquarters have now been supplanted by five. So we'll have, yeah, so we'll have we'll have at least 10 decks. And, and the card list will be uh, available long before that. So you can build your own things. We'll have extra copies of stuff that's not in the decks available if you want to switch out decks in between games or switch out cards in between games to yeah. try and tweak your deck to your, more of your taste. Then, you know, we've... We're going to have that available, so we're, we're just looking to play a few games and have some fun and figure out how to really make this work. Sounds good. Uh, so, meanwhile, you're, uh, you're you're planning on playing in Dewey Worlds. I, I know we're we're looking really good on the turnout for that. It, it, it's going to be a it's going to be a stacked field. I know that much. Oh yeah, and I'm way at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> right there with you, sir. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I mean, worlds is competing in worlds is one thing. Like the big, the you know, my favorite part about it is uh, is just getting to see everybody and you know, meeting all the travelers coming in. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen either uh, Hoskins or uh, Neil or um, I don't know if Kieran's planning on coming, but uh, yeah, that's uh, it'll be good to see some of those guys. Yeah. Yeah, I know we're getting we, we've got some UK players coming to play one uh, e. We've got uh, we got at least three German players that are already already registered for two e. So nice. yeah, definitely some uh, definitely some world travelers coming in. Uh, you know, you got your you got your mainstays. The Van Bremens are, are coming in, and Ken Tufts is coming in. They you know they come to all the worlds. <laughs> right. Those are the ones you expect. But uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, both one e and two e, uh, a lot of uh, former world champions coming in too, uh, looking for another title. Uh, you know, the, you know, I I wasn't expecting uh, I wasn't expecting some of the some of the turnout we're getting for the for one e because that has not done well. You know, it, it's Orlando; it has not done well for us in, in our in our larger events. But this is worlds. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's bringing people in. Um, I'm gonna take a moment uh, and uh, for for those uh, listeners that are first edition fans, uh, you are probably aware we're right in the middle of our spoiler period for the next uh, first edition set, Live Long and Prosper, and uh, I have a spoiler that I'm gonna put on my screen right now. So, uh, just in case you can't see my screen, uh, I'll go ahead and read the card. We have uh, an incident card. Uh, it's called "You're Not Ready." <laughs> I, I wanted this to be. I wanted this to be the card that we spoiled first because I wanted to post this on Facebook. Oh, you want spoilers? You're not ready for spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but. It got to be my second, so that's all right. <laughs> uh, so this is an incident, and uh, first uh, I'll note that it has uh, a new icon by its title uh, that has been identified already as the scheme icon. I really wanted to call that the uh, what was it? There was another word that somebody said that it was it was great. Um, like a playtest or just someone's nickname. No, they put up when when we were trying to figure out what the name for the icon was going to be. It was on one of the staff boards, and yeah. uh, I forget. It was like a uh, plot twist or something. It was some. Uh, it was really It was really evocative, but no nobody wanted to go that route, and we just we ended up with scheme. So it was like, oh, all right, that's fine. Actually, sure we had a hidden agenda, so sure. Yeah, scheme makes me think of uh, arch enemy and magic. Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, where's the where's the big card? I wonder. It's like, yeah. is Nicol Bolas uh, running these? <laughs> right. He just had an expansion come out. It's like, what? He's getting into Tui now or right. Money now? What's he's going everywhere, on? He's everywhere because he's the Elder <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> but 
But uh, but yeah, so here's the game. So the scheme icon, which is unloaded, it's a it's an icon that other cards refer to. Um, but in in this set represents uh, some of the plans that the Vulcans have. Uh, for, uh, I would even I would even say not maybe plans but just kind of protocols like contingencies. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it's it's not necessarily stuff that they're actively putting into motion, but more of the hold on, Starfleet, you need to sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> yep, especially especially in this case with the with the title here, you're not ready. Uh, and the, the game text, it plays between two adjacent missions if you have three Vulcan icon personnel in play. Opponent may not begin mission attempts at adjacent missions with fewer than nine personnel. Unique. So... No red shirting. No, yeah, no. Not even, uh, not even, uh, mid-sized teaming on, on, on those missions. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, no, no, you have, you're going to send everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I, that might not affect some people. Though. There's 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 some players that like to just uh, throw everything they've got at a mission attempt. But uh, I could see this um, see this causing havoc with with uh, with cards like mission debriefing. Sure, and I mean when they put the when they put the proof up. Uh, for um, when they when they, when we when we're proof, when we're proof, ugh, excuse me when we're proofing a new set that comes out uh, it's kind of an all hands everybody on the committee either one of you or two he gets to you know take a whack at it and uh, you know the the my one he reflexes are a little rusty but I, I still you know kind of recognize a few things about how you know cards should be worded and so the first reaction I had was when I saw two adjacent missions and I was like. Well, it says place between two adjacent missions, and I thought, well, of course they're going to be adjacent if you're putting the between, but the... <laughs> but I guess that wording comes from Black Hole because it says two adjacent universal space missions, so obviously, you know, because you had to say adjacent in that place because if you had six or twelve different space missions, I'm going to put it between the two farthest ones, and now you'd have to guess where it... Well, of course you have to say adjacent. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, I went back even further when I was thinking of uh, gaps in normal space. Um, that just says plays between two missions, and they said, well, we want it to be more uh, specific rules-wise so that it, there's no question later on. I said, all right, you know, I'm, I just wanted to give my input on that. So, yeah. Um, Makes sense. Oh, yeah. God, gaps in normal space. Uh, uh, this, this just, yeah. This reminds me of some of those older cards and just like putting barriers up on the space line. I, you know, yep. It's a little Get different. Your Q-Nets ready. It's a little different from yeah. It's a little different than cards like QNet, but uh, but I, I like it. I like the I like that uh, the Vulcans have this way of hindering uh, without necessarily having to battle. Uh, they still they still kind of uh, interact with your opponent. Well, and the other thing it would let them do is to kind of protect their weaker dilemma combos by, you know, sticking this roadblock up in front. And you're like, oh, great. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess I, I guess I have to have at least nine people before I do that. So let me go try this other buzzsaw that's going to murder everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Speaking of which, that's kind of why I didn't mind missing Money Worlds to try and do the Excelsior playtest anyway, <laughs> because, uh, you know... In San Diego, we've got the reputation of being pretty chill with our one tournaments, and you know, I'll show up if we need an extra, you know, to make the numbers come out right. If we need, you know, if we have five and we need a sixth player, then yeah, sure, I'll come and play. But yeah, I have no desire to play in a in a full format, no holds barred. Uh, well, I guess OTF um, format, but still, there's some really nasty things you can do in OTF that I just like. No, oh, yeah. no, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm I'm good. I've got my one e fix. I'm I'm okay. Uh, a, a long one event. I've been in, you know, I, I didn't, when I went to Worlds, I didn't play in one E Worlds. Uh, I think I ended up, uh, I think I ended up judging something and I, I didn't actually play in that particular event. And I was glad I didn't by the end of it. So that was like six, a six round grind. And, oh, and that in 75 minute rounds, you're talking about nine hours in the day. And, just, the, Borg, and the Borg were everywhere because that was right. Yeah, like, that was right at the height of 12 space Borg. 12 space Borg. Yep, yep, yep. 
I've, I know. Yeah, I played. I played that deck. It was awesome. <laughs> I've played. You know, I've I've played in the last couple. You know, here. I. You know, we we did a Masters here. We did a Continentals here. And you know, even those are five rounds, and then another three if you make the top whatever it is, top four, top eight. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that is, a, even, that is exhausting for one. E, that even, is exhausting. There's just so many even options, our, so many things to think about. Yeah, I mean, even our kind of gentleman's agreement milk toast one e scene here in San Diego. I mean, even three rounds of that is enough to be. I'm tapped out at the end of the day. I'm just like, oh, okay, brain's completely tired. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 rough, and we're gonna have so many people coming in. You know, there there you know, there's there's players that are signed up that are just brilliant at this game and that you know they know all the they know all the tricks they know all the combinations they know the ways out of everything they they can plan uh they know what dilemmas you're putting under before you've even done it and they know how to plan for them you know i am not that smart <laughs> oh yeah i mean you know my my kind of discomfort with one e aside there's been some great things coming out of one e design lately that i've just looked at and gone wow Absolutely. there are lots there are a lot smarter players that are going to be able to use this to wreck people, and I'm going to be one of them. <laughs> Absolutely, I've I haven't you know I haven't uh, I haven't uh, been in a constructed one e event in a while, but I have uh, you know a, a friend of mine, a, a local player, uh, and I have have done a few play tests where we've we've thrown a few decks together with the last couple sets, the broken bows, the bro some of the broken bow stuff, and then uh, and then uh, one of the we made a Vulcan deck with the the pre-warp pack stuff there's some yeah there's some really strong stuff in there and i really like just from the pre-warp pack stuff i really like playing the vulcans they were fun mm -hmm. yeah I, I i i had to do the colonar and play with all with just all the vulcans mm -hmm. but it was it was it now, was solid no i forget this <laughs> for two it's different than one is the spot count for that or he's he's spock, not because he's spock, a hybrid spock does count Okay. Yeah. It's too easy. It's in, too easy that he doesn't count. In he's one a, e, right. in one e, uh, if you are half Vulcan, you are Vulcan. Yeah, you're you're both, not neither. Even if you're a quarter, right? Like Alexander's a quarter I, human, but yep. he still counts. Yep. Yep. If it says if it says it at all, it counts. Right. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Uh. Now. Yeah. And the, and I, I I liked that the pre warp pack made you know it was it was a very small set but like with Colinar and uh, with Colinar it made them playable right away and uh, yeah there was could, just there was just enough way. to get you interested mm -hmm. yeah you could run it that way or you could uh, throw them in with your Starfleet and do the the, the treaty the treaty deck because they put mm -hmm. the treaty in there mm -hmm. too so but. Uh, but this this is a this is a big set, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they bring on their own. And I'm I'm am hearing rumors that there's a couple different deck types that could come out of this. So yeah, I really enjoyed seeing all the different uh, new espionage cards. Like uh, <laughs> Robinson spies were everywhere. Were everywhere. Way. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, and Andorian. Mm -hmm. an espionage Vulcan on Andorian. Mm hmm. Yep. That's 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 amazing. Uh, I guess I guess Andorian isn't going to be a thing because they they it, it, it hey, plays on you know what? Aligned, but we got a we got a kind of uh, sandy goldish color border that we hadn't <laughs> seen before. Andorian could be you know like a white frosty kind of thing. You know, right, right. It, could, it could happen. They'd have to errata the the espionage card. Right. <laughs> right. Well, you know. Golovec used to be an online. He turned into Cardassian. It's fine. I'm more. I'm more excited to see if uh, if we get Zindi, just because uh, Zindi Test Strike calls that out. Mm. Although Neil Matthew is more excited because uh, that that card shows my house getting blown up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. That, I think that was when we found out the world was going to be in Florida. That was one of the first things that somebody said was, "Are, are we going to have the, the Zindi bomb?" Why wasn't that in Florida? The promo? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the last seventy-eight years you have here, or whatever it is. That's an alternate timeline. Didn't happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about this set, and uh, yeah, going going back, I'm thrilled. Uh, looking forward to Worlds, which is just about uh, six weeks or so now. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> I looked at the calendar the other day, and I was like, is it the middle of August already? Oh, man. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's coming up fast. I yeah. still have, I, I still feel like I have so much to do. <laughs> I definitely have a lot more to do. Um, I'm going to put the finishing touches on the uh, the new Excelsior card list, make deck lists for, for those, get those printed out and sent out, and uh, have them all ready to be packed up when I make the trip out there. Uh, now, do you think, uh, do you have some idea when you think the, the the next card list might get published? The goal was tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be honest and say that's probably unlikely. <laughs> we'll have to see. Uh, I, right now, it's about 50% done. We've got all okay. of the, we've got all of the, uh, We've got all the additions listed in different places. It's just collating them all onto the same document. Um, and that's sort of time intensive. Um, one other sort of quality of life improvement for uh, version 0 0.3, um, Johnny Oliva actually suggested that we put the card uh, collector numbers next to the card titles because uh, if you aren't using the lackey filter uh, there's no filter on the the Trexy C site yet for Excelsior um, right. but and once that gets set up it's not going to be a problem but at least for this play test if you're not using lackey to help you out with that it's really difficult like uh, he was saying that he was having to kind of try to figure out you know he had to look up every card and go like what set is this from what's this? <laughs> so yeah yeah um, Depending so on putting how you the sort your collection, that, that, that it might make some of them tough to find. I, I understand. Right, right. So we put the collector number. We're, we're gonna we're putting the collector numbers on the card list for uh, zero point three. We're also splitting up uh, dilemmas uh, like you would see on a deck list. So planet do a dilemma first, yeah. planet space, right? And missions the same way, planet okay. and space. Um, so that should help people at least navigate if they want to build their own decks. Just help them out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a little bit time intensive to, to put all that stuff on there. Um, I have the card pools for uh, Cardassian and Borg uh, ready to import. Um, and again, it's just a, a question of actually formatting the, the new additions and getting uh, everybody straightened up and uh, spelled right. We had a few typos that were pointed out on the last one. So uh, we're trying to get all those corrected. And uh, so I would say there's a maybe small chance you might see it tomorrow night sometime around nine o'clock if it updates correctly from from the, uh, from the website but uh probably more likely it'll update on tuesday night um so you'll, you should see it by uh, by wednesday this week at the latest. well that well that was either way that was a lot closer than i uh than i was expecting so very soon within the next uh, couple of days at the most yeah awesome. yeah 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 we had we had our initial uh kind of post-mortem of 0 0.2 just after uh, the San Diego play test at the beginning of this month. And uh, we went just straight into development of the next revision of the card pool. And we met last week to uh, gather all of that data. And so that's all I've been doing this, whenever, whenever I've been working on the version 0 0.3 is, you know, collating that, uh, filling gaps that need to be filled to, to get our to get our pool to the desired size the uh, this will be sort of a stress test for the size of the card pool um, we had initially said that we want to start the pool around 400 and at maximum it's going to be around 800 uh -huh. and this will this will be a full size pool so people can get an idea of this is how deep things are going to be at the maximum test this out see if this is you know if you if you want things that are deeper than this you know then uh you know we'll have to figure out how to how to um uh, rejigger that so that yeah. um the ratios are better for for deeper cuts or we could run into the opposite problem where people are just like you know this is 
you've got too many things going on for each different headquarters. Nothing's really focused, and you know we might have to um, to pull it back a little bit. But uh, right now, well, even so, just bringing in that fifth affiliation is going to bump up the the card pool. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, initially, the card pools for each affiliation were about fifty because we had about thirty-five people, five ships, and then a few assorted uh, uh, ev- events and interrupts for each of the headquarters. Right. And we're doubling that to about, we're doubling that for each to about a hundred. Oh wow! Um, so that's about five hundred cards, and then uh, the dilemma pool is also doubling. So. So it was 100, now it's going to be up to 200, mm-hmm. and uh, the mission count is also going up dramatically to, to help spread out to uh, populate the other affiliations. Nice. Um, the verb count is not going to change as dramatically. Um, the verb count will probably be right around maybe 80 or so, um, just because we didn't want to... We wanted to allow people to try the different... Uh, archetypes. So we want to see Borg dissidents plus maybe an alpha, or, uh, maybe uh, some kind of solver that they, that they can put together with some tangential assimilation. We want to see Cardassian capture. We also want to see Cardassian dissidents uh, with uh, Kira Nerys, uh, Ileana Gamor, um, and trying that whole angle to see if we can get that to work in the limited format without being super broken. Because the main thing that made that dick super crazy was the double headquarters build with Romulan's uh, dissonance, but that's kind of one of the reasons why we thought about, hey, maybe one headquarters might not be such a bad idea, so <laughs> uh, so that was that was kind of the rationale for that, but uh, yeah, we're excited to see how, what the reaction is going to be. Uh, I think the first playtest that I know of, we're going we're gonna to try to play in two weeks uh, in San Diego, just as kind of a you know, introduction to the full size of the card pool, and then just kind of get some uh, feedback on some early ideas about is this a great idea to put this much ratio? You know, were the ratios right? Do, do we, does it feel like it needs more of something than the other? Um, and then uh, there there might be a a slight tweak before uh, the playtest at Worlds based on that, or if we get any other uh, playtest feedback during September. If anybody else wants to schedule a public playtest for your area, there will be uh, decks, at least one deck for each headquarters that are available, and we'll, we'll post those um, when we post the article with the uh, um, with the actual document for version 0.3. And there's actually an option in the tournament scheduler now where it'll ask you for the type of event, and you and there's a public playtesting option. And just got a little exclamation point because it kind of so it kind of stands out. <laughs> I did see that was in there. Though. That's right. That's right. Yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. So if you That's if you cool. want to run a, if you want to run a public playtest of Excelsior version zero point three, feel free to do so. Uh, if you give us if you give specifically me if you send me some feedback or post it on we've got a uh, an Excelsior post in the uh, I think it's the league the WCT league sub forum right now. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, we're going to have our own sub forum for just Excelsior stuff, but for right now, that's where we're living. Um, if you send me any kind of feedback based on uh, the results of what happened, um, I'll send you guys a little care package. I've, I've got a, I've got some stuff sent to set aside for uh, Fritz and the South African guys who helped us out because uh, that was invaluable. So that's that's getting shipped out. I think Wednesday. I, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, that's all. Uh, they're they're getting they're getting a fair share for their work, and uh, if you'd like to help us out, we've got some for you as well. That's awesome. Well, sounds good, Matt. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to wrap up here. So Project Excelsior, uh, if you want to run a, pu- a like 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 you just said, if you want to run a public play test, uh, you can set it up in the tournament system. Uh, talk to Matt and give him some feedback. And uh, if you are interested in worlds. It's coming up fast, October 4th through 8th in Orlando this year. All three formats, uh, something like 20 events. It's 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 going to be crazy. It's five days. It's just, it's nuts. But and Excelsior, Daniel needs a roommate. <laughs> yeah, well, well we're, we're working on that. <laughs> but uh, Matt will be there. Out, <laughs> Matt will be there. Excelsior will be there. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you, Matt. 
yeah, it's going to be a good time. All right, so uh, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, my name is Daniel Madison, and this has been the Observation Lounge. We will be off next week. Uh, so it's going to be uh, the 27th will be uh, my next episode, and uh, we'll, we'll let you know soon what we're, what we're doing. So tune in then, uh, and uh, for now, I'm signing off. Everybody have fun.